BT8 New Awakening is just around the corner, so what are the top meta decks that people should be aware of? Let's talk about it. What's up tamers? Welcome back to the other decks. My name's Casual Dobo, and today we're going to be doing the BT8 Starter Pack. I did one of these back in BT7, where we covered, you know, blue hybrids, yellow hybrids, and uh, red hybrids. I'm saying that those would probably be the most prevalent uh, deck archetypes that you'd see in BT7, but obviously they weren't exactly uh, the things that you would see. Um, there were actually uh, kind of a couple surprises uh, in the BT7 meta. But with BT8 on the horizon, I did want to do the same thing again. Um, where we're talking about three decks that, um, pr I don't know if they're meta, because it's tough to say what the meta is going to be, just because, um, you know, if you look towards the Japanese meta, totally different cards because of the ban list. So, am I going to say that these are the top three meta decks in BT8? Of course I am. Top three meta decks of BT8. No, but realistically, these are actually some of the most hyped up decks. Um, that people are excited about, uh, whether it's because it features fan favorite uh, Vmon, really, um, the O2 uh, Digimon, um, or uh, Black War Greymon. Yes, that is a little bit of a teaser for all the decks that we're going to go over. But if you are hyped for those decks or just hyped for BTA in general, let me know down in the comments below what deck you are looking forward to. And while you're down there, if you're enjoying the content, please uh, give the video a like and uh, consider subscribing to the channel for more Digimon content like this as well as uh, the Tournament of Jank, which I just um, put out last week. Which, if you don't know what that is, that is just um, a fun tournament that my friends and I are doing, uh, where we went ahead, banned a bunch of cards, uh, gave each other uh, different deck ratios and restrictions, and try and build decks around it, and square off and see who wins that tournament. So, if that seems like something that's of interest for you, uh, feel free to go over to the channel and uh, check it out. But yeah, I think that's enough of this intro. Oh, uh, one other thing. Um, all the deck profiles I'm going to be listing out uh, will be in uh, the chapters, timestamp stuff, um, etc. You know what it is. You know YouTube. But yeah, those will be down below so that, you know, as you're watching through, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you're coming back to the video and want to just see a specific one, you can do that as well. But anyway, that's enough from me. Let's hop into the deck profile. All right. So starting us off, we do have... Blue Green Imperial Dramon. By the way, before I continue, what do you think about the new BT8 frame? I know I haven't explicitly stated it, but um, I do try and change out these frames uh, to fit the set that we're currently in. But yeah, as with any good deck profile we do, we're gonna start off with our Digitama, and we have one copy of Upamon. So Upamon says that uh, if your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution sources, you can trigger draw one. Overall, oops. Make sure that didn't do anything. Okay, everything's still recording. Cool. Um, Ubermon, very solid Digimon. Um, if you've played Blue, you know what it does. Um, but if your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution sources, uh, trigger draw one once per turn when attacking. I know I read that backwards, but you know. However, you'll notice that's one of because instead we're running four copies of Demi Vmon. This says that when attacking once per turn, if you have a Digimon with jamming, uh, you also get to draw one. So, lots of good draw power from our Digi Eggs. Going into the rookies, uh, you'll notice it's a bit of a Vmon party. <laughs> Starting off with BT3 Vmon, Jamming Vmon, the GOAT rookie card <laughs> of blue. Jamming Vmon, very good card, especially in this um, archetype of Imperial Dramon and Jamming. So, 4 of is pretty much a must. Then, going into the EX1 uh, Vmon, this has the inheritable that says, uh, on your turn, once per turn, when the Digimon becomes unsuspended during your main phase, gain one memory. And so that's going to be a recurring theme that you see at the top end of the Mega level, um, just because uh, you'll be able to unsuspend yourself and gain that memory. So, four copies of EX1 Vmon. Next up, I do have four copies of the starter deck Vmon, which has on play, uh, reveal top three, add a free type card from among them to your hand, and then place the remaining at the bottom of your deck. There is a lot of Digimon with free. In fact, pretty much the whole entire Imperial Digimon line and Vmon line are free Digimon, so this pretty much allows you to get anything you want. And then rounding out the rookies, do have two copies of Terriermon. Uh, this is the memory blocker Terriermon, um, also a green rookie, which means it can't Digivolve off our Vmons, uh, but we can hard play it for three, and then 
Um, we have plenty of routes to go into champions, ultimates, megas. So really, it's not that detrimental to essentially miss the draw off to Duvolution for this. Moving on to the champions, we do have EX1 X Vmon. This has jamming as its main ability, and then as an inheritable, um, when this Digimon has Imperial Digimon in its name or free in its traits, it gains jamming. Next up, we do have four copies of Starter Deck Stingmon. So we can play this for three if we have a blue Digimon in play already from our hand. And then as an inheritable, when attacking, if we have a blue Digimon in play, we can trigger draw one. And then rounding out the level fours, we do have three copies of Ragermon from uh, BT8. So this is an armor digivolution, so it can digivolve off of a Vmon for two, and that can happen in your um, in your uh, raising area, just because that is an effect, or it does not affect. That's just a alternate digivolution cost. And then its main ability is armor release. So if this Digimon would be deleted, you can trash the top card, aka the Ragermon, um, to prevent the Digimon in total from being deleted. And then when digivolving, uh, suspend one of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon. Uh, but the main reason I wanted it here is because it's both a blue and a green, so it kind of fulfills our uh, Jogress, um capabilities. Going into the ultimates, we do have four copies of the starter deck, uh, Pyeldramon. So this is a blue and a green, and can DNA Digivolve, aka Jogress, um, by placing a blue level 4 and a green level 4 underneath the bid. Next up, we have three copies of Dino Beamon. Once again, from the starter deck. This is uh, considered a green and a blue, and then you can DNA Digivolve by putting uh, green first, then blue, uh, underneath the stack. Then, when Digivolving, we can suspend one of our opponent's Digimon. Then, if this was a uh, you know Jogress or DNA Digivolved, uh, that Digimon doesn't unsuspend during the next unsuspend phase. So, pretty cool stun. Moving on to the level sixes, uh, it's Imperial Digimon. A lot of them. <laughs> so we're going to start off with BT3 Imperial. We got two copies of this. Um, and this is the one that, um, if it digivolves off of Pyodramon or Dino Beamon, you can reduce it uh, by two. So essentially, you can digivolve into it for three memory. Um, and this one does have jamming. And when digivolving, we can unsuspend all of our Digimon with jamming. Moving on to the main boss monster of this deck, we do have three copies of Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode. So uh, this can digivolve off of Dragon Mode for two costs, which is pretty nice. And then when digivolving, return one of our opponent's Digimon with 10,000 DP or less to the owner's hand. And then it's when attacking once per turn ability is, if the Digimon has a blue Digivolution card in its sources, unsuspend one of your Digimon. If the Digimon has a green Digivolution card, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. So the way that we've kind of um, built this deck, you should technically have both colors within Digivolution sources, so when attacking, you should be able to activate these. Then rounding out our level 6s, we do have two copies of the starter deck Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode, where when digivolving, you can play one blue and one green level 4 lower digivolution card from underneath this card as another Digimon without paying their memory cost. So you can put out um, XVmon and Stingmon, which then sets up the play to Jogress into, you know, Dino Beamon or Pyodramon. And if you didn't catch earlier, that DNA Digivolve uh, ability is zero. <laughs> So essentially, you are skipping, you know, one or two steps uh, in building up another Imperial Digimon, which is pretty sweet. And then moving on to our level sevens and finishing out the Digimon, we do have two copies of Blitz Omnimon. So when Digivolving, it does have Blitz, and then if it's uh, suspended, you can unsuspend this Digimon. I mean, even if you're just using this to um, do the final swing at the end of the game, this Omnimon, Blitz Omnimon, is just good. And then moving on to our options, we do have one copy of Ice Wall. Listen, I'm a rogue player. I hate seeing Ice Wall, but I have to admit it's a very good blue card. So um, because it is restricted, we do only have the one of it. And if you don't know what Ice Wall does, essentially your opponent gains when attacking, lose two memory until the end of the next turn. It also has a security effect, very similar to um, Hammer Spark. Uh, this says uh, security, gain two memory. Now, this might be an interesting pick. I have three copies of Giga Death. <laughs> One, wild name. But two, uh, nine memory costs. And then main ability, spend one of your opponent's Digimon, then return up to 10 of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of their deck in any order. <laughs> Which is wild, especially if your opponent has like wide boards. Um, it's probably, if it at least feels less worth it if it's a single target uh, return. But depending on single target, might not be that bad if you had to equate it. It's kind of like a 
um, wider, uh, you know, Gaia Force. So I, I like it in this deck. And then moving on to our tamers, we do have three copies of Davis. This is the memory tamer. And then on play, you can reveal top three, add a blue and a green Digimon from among them, and then place the remaining at the bottom of your deck. So just a fantastic overall uh, blue memory tamer. Uh, and it's his price shows. <laughs> but rounding out our tamers, we do have two copies of the BT8, Davis, and Ken. So start of your main phase, if you have a blue Digimon in play, gain a memory. Then if you have a green Digimon in play, gain a memory. So once you get into um, your ultimate and mega stage, you should be able to proc both of these. And then on your turn, when your Digimon digivolves into a Digimon that has two or more colors, you can suspend a tamer to unsuspend that Digimon. And yeah, that is one of the ways that we can proc the inheritable off of, I believe, EX1 Vmon and gain that memory. So yeah, that is the deck profile for a blue-green Imperial Dramon uh, Jogress edition. Now, let's move on to the second deck profile. All right, and here we are at the second deck profile, and you're probably wondering, hey, this looks kind of familiar. There's a lot of familiar faces. That's right. It's Vmon Tribal. Uh, specifically, this is uh, what many people have been calling uh, Armor Rush, um, just because it kind of plays off of the um, Armor Evolutions uh, that come out in BT8. Personally, I would have called it Champion Crush because I like alliteration, but I'll pay respect to the people who started it first. So, Armor Rush it is. And to start us off, we're going to be looking at four copies of Demi Vmon. We talked about in the previous section, but if this Digimon has jamming, draw one when you attack, and that's once per turn. I opted for only uh, four eggs in this particular deck just because the way Armor Rush kind of works, it's just a step above Rookie Rush, and so it's pretty aggressive. So I wanted to see the consistency of Demi Vmon. If you want to put a fifth Digi Egg in here, feel free to. Now going into the rookies, we have, hey, there's four copies of Jamming Vmon. He jams. <laughs> Moving on, we do have two copies of Madoki Betamon. Opponent can't gain uh, memory except for Tamer effects. So pretty much the blue version of Terriermon. Which makes me think, why did I put Terriermon in the other one when I could have just put Madoki Betamon? Who's to say? <laughs> All right, next up, we do have two copies of BT8 Vmon. This is on play, reveal top four of your deck, then add one two-colored Digimon from among them, as long as it has blue uh, from among them, and then put it to your hand, bottom deck the rest of it. But only two of just because um, we do have other monocolor things and it doesn't look for your Vmons either. Um, so it can be too much searching uh, if we have more than two copies of it. Moving on, we have three copies of EX1 Vmon, and this has the inheritable when this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your main phase, gain one memory. Next up, we do have three copies of uh, Vmon from the All Force uh, starter deck. We don't play any All Force in here, uh, so the main ability, kind of useless, but I do like it's when attacking inheritable. If we have seven or fewer cards in hand, we can trigger draw one. Or rounding out the champions, it's, oh hey, look, Vmon. <laughs> Um, this is from the newer starter deck that will be coming out when the set releases as well. Um, and this says, on play, reveal top three of your deck, add one free type card from among them, and then place the remaining at the bottom of your deck. Um, pretty much all of our Digimon um, above the rookie level are free. I'll have to check that Halsamon, but the ones that we want to see are free. <laughs> hey look, it is free. And it's our next card. So, two copies of Halsamon. Um, we don't have a Hawkmon in here, so we can't use its alternate Digivolution cost, but it does have armor release and can Digivolve off of a blue card for three. And then this has uh, some nice utility. Um, when attacking, delete one of your opponent's level three Digimon. So if you're playing against any hybrid decks, goodbye, Pokemon. <laughs> Moving on to the level fours we want to see. Sorry, Halsamon. <laughs> we do have four copies of Ragermon. Once again, can Digivolve off of um, Vmon for two, and because that's an alternate Digivolution cost, because it's in that box, you can uh, Digivolve for two in the raising area. It has armor release, and then when Digivolving, suspend one of our opponents to level four or lower Digimon. So long, Pokemon. <laughs> Next up, we do have four copies of Flame Dramon. Can Digivolve off of Vmon for two, armor release, and then when attacking, this Digimon gains 3,000 DP for the turn, which is kind of wild. That makes it an 8,000 DP attacker. And then moving on, the main champion we want to see is Magnamon. So it can uh, Digivolve off of a yellow or a blue uh, for four. Can Digivolve off of Vmon for three, which is nice. Has Blocker, Armor Release, 
and then when did evolving on suspended Digimon and then for each card with armor in its stage in your trash this Digimon gains 2000 DP until the end of your opponent's next turn. So that means that you can be fairly aggressive with your um, armor evolutions um, if they die to security or in other, some other way shape or form just use armor release, it goes into trash, the Vmon stays on the field, and you're building up your trash for your Magnamon play. So yeah, say you just have like one copy of each of the armor digivolutions we just talked about, that is an additional 6,000 DP. This is now a, uh, what, 13,000 DP uh, champion? Wild. And there's another trick in here and the options uh, that we'll talk about in a bit uh, that kind of uh, facilitates the, these plays. But yeah, Magnamon, very good. And then to round out the Digimon, we do have one copy of Chimeramon. So Chimeramon is a uh, unique uh, Jogris uh, DNA Digivolution uh, Digimon. So it can DNA Digivolve uh, for any level four and any level four. Um, that's what the rainbow symbol uh, means here. And then when Digivolving, you can place one level five or lower Digimon card from your trash at the bottom of this Digimon's Digivolution cards. Then up to four of your opponent's Digimon get minus 1,000. Uh, DP for the for oh, no. Jesus, there's a lot of text here. Getting the Yu-Gi-Oh levels over here. <laughs> then up to four of your opponent's Digimon get minus 1,000 DP for each color this Digimon has until the end of your opponent's next turn. And then on your turn, this Digimon is also treated as the color of the cards in its Digivolution cards. And if it has four more colors, it gains plus 4,000 DP. So it would make it a 12,000 uh, attacker. So yeah, good possibility to get all four colors in here. And then yeah, if you didn't know about Joggers, um, one thing that uh, can happen is you can swing out with the champions that you're going to use for the Joggers, you know, reduce your opponent's security by zero. And then by digivolving this, because it's a zero to digivolve if you do the Joggers, it'll actually come onto the field unsuspended and able to attack. So you can go in for a game with Chimeramon. At least I believe that's how it is. Uh, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments down below. Now, moving on to the options, once again, one copy of Ice Wall. It's too good not to put in there. We do have two uh, blue memory boosts just because a lot of our Digimon have blue. Obviously, Vmon, blue all the way. Uh, and I'm pretty sure each of our armor evolutions has blue in it somewhere. So pretty much all of our Digimon can be searchable with this. And plus, having delay, gain two memory is just overall good to have. We have two copies of Hammer Spark because I tried to make this as meta as possible. And then, admittingly, there's a lot of options in here. But I do like uh, three copies of Fire Rocket. So if we have an armor, um, we can use it without meeting the uh, color requirements. And then one of our Digimon with two or more colors gains security attack plus one for the turn. Moving on to the last option card, we do have Armor Texture. So if we have a Digimon with armor in play, uh, we can ignore the color requirements. And then the main part of this is trash the top card of one of your Digimon with armor in its attribute. Then one of your Digimon can Digivolve into a Digimon with armor in its attribute from your hand by paying its Digivolution cost. And if you do, unsuspended Digimon. So this option card essentially allows you to swap uh, armor Digivolutions. So say you have Ragermon, um, you swing in with it, it lives. You can then use armor texture, delete the Ragermon, it goes back to being a Vmon. You can then swap in uh, for Flame Drummon and then unsuspend it and then have Flame Drummon um, attack in. And then rounding out the deck profile, we do have our Tamers, three copies of Davis, Memory Tamer, and allows us to pick up uh, a blue and green Digimon. And then lastly, three copies of Davis and Ken. If we have a blue Digimon in play, gain a memory. If we have a green Digimon in play, gain a memory. And then when a uh, Digimon digivolves into a Digimon, that, hold on, I, got, I, I said that way too fast. When your Digimon digivolves into a Digimon that has two or more colors. Okay, we got there. You can suspend this tamer to unsuspend that Digimon. If you say Digimon like too many times, it just starts to sound weird. <laughs> but anyway, uh, both awesome tamers. And yeah, that is the deck profile uh, for uh, BT8 Armor Rush, Vmon Tribal. All right, so let's move on to the last deck profile for this video. All right, and here we are at the last deck profile for this starter pack, and it's Black War Greymon. Red, Black, Black War Greymon. And this deck in particular was the reason why I was like, I don't know if it's really going to be meta, um, because it is a bit of a slower deck when, you know, Armor Rush is super fast, super aggressive. Um, this meta is probably going to be a little bit more aggressive. 
but I think this is probably one of the more hyped up decks just because Black War Greymon is a cool Digimon and thus far it's kind of had meh cards. But being able to combine um, black and red together uh, just feels very powerful. Um, and there's a sweet option card, which we'll discuss. Um, and obviously, Greymon Tribal, pretty cool. So, let's just hop into it. And we have four copies of Koromon. This one says, when attacking once per turn, if the Sigimon has Omnimon or Greymon, other than those non-Greymons in its name, it trigger draw one. So this is just a really good draw engine for a deck that is going to be playing a lot of things with Greymon in its name. I did put in a fifth one, Gurimon, which is the baby in training form of um, Gammamon. So this is the in training of Gurimon uh, when attacking once per turn. If the Digimon has 6,000 DP or more, trigger draw one. So both of our eggs are, are aimed at um, drawing us more cards, which is something that historically Red has not been able to do well. So pretty cool to see here. Moving on to our rookies, we do have uh, four copies of BTA Agumon. Um, this can digivolve off of uh, black or red uh, in training, so that's pretty cool. Allows us to digivolve. But really, what we want here is the on play. Reveal top four of the deck, add one Digimon card with Greymon in its name, and one Digimon card with Dragonkin in its type from among them, and add them to your hand, then bottom deck the rest of it. So, you should be able to search for most things. The only sort of issue with this is that it doesn't search for your fellow Agumon. Hopefully, that won't be too much of a problem, but just be wary of that. Next up, we do have two copies of Agumon Expert. So, on play, return an Agumon from trash and put it to your hand. Unfortunately, it does not affect itself because it specifically says Agumon. And then similarly, as you can imagine, we have Nokia in here. Nokia cannot play Agumon Expert. But this is a great way to recycle some of the rookies. Um, that kind of get destroyed throughout the battle and allows you to um, keep your uh, draw pool um, fresh. Next up, we have four copies of BT5 Agumon. So reveal top three, add a Greymon other than the non-Greymons, and then also add a Digimon card with Omnimon in its name. Then place them in your hand and then bot deck the rest. And then lastly, we do have um, four copies of starter deck Agumon that does have the inheritable when attacking. If it attacks a player, uh, plus 2,000 DP. Now you could put in some of the like um, pro promo Agumons and all that other stuff, but I didn't want to go too far into getting some of those promo things just because uh, they do be expensive. And you could save that money uh, buying a starter deck Greymon, which you can see on the screen. But we'll talk about that in a bit. Next up, moving on to our champions, do have four copies of BT8 Greymon. Uh, this can digivolve off of red or black, and then inheritable opponent's turn. When you have a red Digimon in play, this Digimon gains Blocker. And because Black War Greymon is black red, it'll have Blocker. Next up, one copy of BT5 Greymon, but when Digivolving, if this Digimon has Agumon in his uh, Digivolution cards, you gain a memory. And now if you have uh, Nokia, it is essentially a free Digivolution into Greymon. And then on your turn, as an Inheritable, while this Digimon has Omnimon or Greymon in his name, gain 2000 DP. Next up, do have two copies of Starter Deck Greymon. This is the one to give Security Attack plus one. And I like this aggressive approach um, to, to this deck, um, just because one again has many opportunities to, to get ahead in terms of security count uh, as you can. And then finishing out our uh, level fours, we do have four copies of Cyclomon from BT8. Can Digivolve off red black, and then inheritable when attacking, delete one of our opponent's Digimon with 2000 DP or less. But this is just a solid card that can be searchable with our one Agumon because it does have Dragonkin and represents for both um, black and red. Moving on to the ultimates, four copies of the new BT8 uh, Metal Greymon. When Digivolving, uh, trigger the Digivolve 1 on one of our opponent's Digimon, then delete one of our opponent's Digimon with 3000 DP or less. Honestly, and, and I didn't think about this earlier, but this is pretty solid for uh, handling uh, against the uh, Armor Rush, because you can de digivolve uh, the Armor Evolution and then uh, destroy the Vmon underneath without having to trigger uh, Armor Release. But the main reason we want this Digimon is because of the Inheritable. On your turn, when this Digimon has Dragonkin or Machine in its type, uh, this Digimon can also attack your opponent's unsuspended Digimon, which, for one of our uh, Black War Greymon, which you can kind of see there, um, 
is pretty good, <laughs> but we'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, rounding out the ultimates, do have two copies of EX1 uh, Metal Greymon when attacking. Uh, when this Digimon attacks a player, delete one of our opponent's Digimon with 4,000 DP or less. Once again, uh, good removal for some of the lower end stuff. And then uh, the Inheritable, when this Digimon has Machine or Dragon King in its traits, it gains Piercing. So both of these are obviously very solid for our Megas, which are Black War Greymon. So as our secondary Mega, I do have the um, BT2 Secret Rare uh, Black War Greymon. While your opponent has a uh, Digimon with 10,000 DP or more in play, you can reduce the on play cost uh, by six, making it seven to play, which ideally we're not really doing that because we do want the inheritables from Metal Greymon, but it's when attacking ability is very nice. When attacking, if you attack an opponent's Digimon with the highest DP, unsuspend this Digimon. So if you combine that with BT8 uh, Metal Greymon, you can potentially wipe their board if you can swing over their highest dp and then yeah once again pretty good with uh playing against armor uh rush just because even if you trigger the armor release you can unsuspend it and still attack into your opponent's unsuspended digimon so black war greymon pretty solid but the main black war greymon we want is the new one from bt8 when digivolving if there's a red card in this digimon's digivolution cards you can choose one of your opponent's digimon and then if there's a black card in there, you can choose one of your opponent's samers, uh, delete any number of chosen cards whose total play costs add up to six or less. So realistically, you're probably looking at a three cost tamer and a three cost rookie. You could also do something that's a four and two. You know, the, the math is, is there. And then on all turns, once per turn, when your opponent's Digimon are deleted, you can unsuspend this Digimon. So this is cool because this can, you know, potentially uh, proc multiple swings into your opponent's security on your turn. If you swung in with a Metal Greymon and then Digivolved on top of it, you can delete Digimon. It would unsuspend and then you can attack in with Black War Greymon. But the main way we use this is with the Greymon, right? Because we'll have something with red on the board. Black War Greymon is also red. And it'll have blocker. So at least once per turn. Uh, we can block two things with Black War Greymon, so pretty solid. And then moving on to our uh, level 7s, do have two copies of Blitz Omni. Overall, just a very solid uh, Digimon to have. It can Digivolve off the Secret Rare. It can only Digivolve off the BT8 Black War Greymon, so keep that in mind. But have two copies of that. And then moving on to the options, three copies of Dark Gaia Force. But just as a reminder, you do need to have um, a red and black uh, card on the field to activate uh, this ability, but eight cost memory, and then choose any number of your opponent's Digimon whose total play cost adds up to 15 or less, and then delete all of the chosen Digimon. So, pretty wild. It's a pretty big board wipe, and 15 is a pretty decent number to have. And then rounding out our options, we do have two copies of Atomic Blaster. So, uh, five memory to play, and then we can choose any number of our opponent's Digimon whose total DP adds up to 8,000 or less, and then delete them. Like I said, this is a bit of a slower deck, and so any way that we can try and mitigate some of that aggression that we'll probably see against us, um, I'll take. And then moving on to our tamers, do have three copies of Marcus Damon, so this is a memory tamer. And then on our turn, when one of our Digimon with Greymon in its name attacks, we can suspend it to gain one memory. And then alternatively, you can put in the Taikamiya here, who's also a memory tamer, and then if you have four or more in the Digivolution sources, gain security attack plus one. But that's also a $15 card each. <laughs> so um, Marcus Damon, I believe, is going to be the cheaper of the options. And then rounding out the deck profile, do have three copies of Nokia. So on play, we can play an Agumon or Gabumon from our hand without paying memory costs. And then when one of our Digimon essentially digivolves into a Greymon, other than the non-Greymons, um, you can suspend the Tamer to reduce the memory cost of the Digivolution by one. So obviously, there's a lot of things with Greymon in his name, um, and that's primarily why we're using it. And then as a quick reminder, we can't play Agumon Expert with Nokia. But still, she is a fantastic Tamer to have uh, for the stack. So yeah, that is the three BT8 deck profiles that I think are going to be uh, good starting points for anyone who wants to um, start with this set. New Awakening is super exciting because it introduces uh, these dual color cards and I'm super excited that I believe all of the ones that we featured on this video had uh, dual colors in them. Um, 
Obviously, two color decks have kind of been my thing for a while because they were kind of rogue, kind of janky. And now that they're coming into the meta, I'm gonna have to find new ways to get weird. But if you're excited to explore BTA with me, please subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing a lot more videos. We're gonna be doing the Tournament of Jank, even though that's BT7, still should be a good time. Um, lots of exciting things happening on the channel. But anyway, that'll do it for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, Tamers, remember, build what you like, play what you love. And I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one.